All right, so let's jump right in. Uh, we want to do four things during this session. Number one, we want to download the OpenAI Chat GPT package from BotStore. We're going to talk about exactly how to do that. There's technically two approaches, so I'll show you both of those. We're going to install the new OpenAI Chat GPT package into a control room. You'll either do this on community or enterprise. Again, I'll show you uh, both of those options and talk through uh, the best approach there. We're going to get an API key from OpenAI. I'll show you exactly where to get that. If you don't have an account yet, we'll talk about the account creation process and getting that set up. And then finally, we'll build a demo to test an automation. And we just wanna make sure that our API key plus the package are working well together. And we'll just do a really basic test for this video. Um, but I wanna encourage you to try out and play with uh, different capabilities of this package. All right, so let's start by heading over to Bot Store. I'm going to close this guy. I'm here at uh, botstore.automationanywhere.com. If I come to the top here and search for OpenAI or just start typing that, the OpenAI chat GPT package is the very first uh, response that shows up. So I'm going to click on that one. And while that's loading, I want to talk about the fact that What's really unique about Automation Anywhere is that we're able to push out these packages off cycle release, right? So the packages aren't necessarily tied to uh, the actual control room um, services and microservices that end up being updated during a normal release. So this is a really cool capability of Automation Anywhere that enables us to do cool stuff like this, where we can just like publish this stuff and make it available. Uh, all right, so we've got the OpenAI chat GPT package page. Uh, I have signed in already. You will have to sign in to Bot Store in order to download this. But I'm going to click right here where it says Get Package. Now, yours may not show these two if you haven't actually downloaded this already. When you do it for the very first time, it's going to prompt you uh, with a message that says you can either add it to your control room directly or download it as a zip. If you're going to add it to your control room directly, you would have to be using uh, Automation Anywhere Enterprise Cloud Edition, right? Uh, I think this may work with on-prem, but it would depend on your firewall being opened up to Bot Store. So the safest way to guarantee that you're getting it is to download it as a zip. And when you click this, it's going to come up with this little message and it will start the download here. Um, this is the best way to get it. This is the way that I like to do it. Um, yes, you can install it directly into your control room. And basically what that, what's happening there is we're sending it directly from Bot Store to your control room and doing the installation for you. Um, it's the exact same thing if you get the zip and just download it. So I just do it this way. All right, we did mention, uh, at least in the intro I mentioned, that uh, you can do this in Community Edition or you can do this in Enterprise. It can be on-prem, it can be on cloud, doesn't really matter. I'm going to log into Community Edition for this one. The normal way that you would install a package if you're just building one from scratch is you would essentially use the package SDK, you would compile it, you would get a jar file. You would upload that jar file right here. Uh, you can't see it here because I'm in Community Edition, but normally there would be an enterprise. There is a like box with an up arrow that enables me to upload a jar file. Um, because we downloaded it from Community Edition, what we're actually getting is the package that has been packaged together with uh, an, a sample bot. So what we need to do instead is we're gonna go to this Automation tab, and I'm gonna click this Import Bots. And when I click Import Bots, I can import a zip file of a downloaded automation. So I'm gonna click that. So I've got my chat GPT package that we just downloaded. I have the option to skip or overwrite if it already exists. I'm just gonna leave it at the default of skip and I'll hit import. Now, what actually installs is a little bit different if I'm using community edition versus if I'm using um, enterprise edition. So if we open up uh, our zip file there, let me go back to downloads. Here's our zip. So if we take a look at the zip file, what we see inside of it is we have an Automation Anywhere folder, and then we have a bunch of jar files, right? And those jar files are essentially all of the required jars or the required packages to make this sample automation work. If I open up this folder right here for Automation Anywhere, I can see that 
I'm greeted with the root of a bot store folder. Inside of bot store, I have an OpenAI package um, folder. And then inside of that, I have the bot that's included with that bot store download. Now, because I'm using community edition, I don't have access to that bot store directory, right? It just doesn't show up. So this sample bot doesn't actually install for community edition, right? I don't see it, but the package itself will still install. If I'm using enterprise edition, either on-prem or in cloud, when I install this, what I should see is that I have a second folder here at the same level of bots that's called bot store. Again, assuming you have permissions for this based on your, your role. Um, inside of that, I should find a folder that says OpenAI package. Inside of that, I should find just a really basic uh, demo bot that you could go and configure without having to build it yourself. Okay, so I just wanted to clarify that it is slightly different if you are using um, enterprise versus community edition, but I'm on community edition, so I'm showing you that experience. All right, so what we can do is we will go to the packages directory here. We want to validate that our package installed. It was called OpenAI, right here it is. If I click on that, I can see the OpenAI package. I can see that I have uh, one action in it. And so we'll be able to use that. Let's go back here and um, let's, let's start building out the automation using that first. So I'm gonna click into my bots directory here. I'm gonna add a new folder that I'm just gonna call OpenAI. I'll hit create folder. And here I will create a uh, OpenAI demo bot and hit create and edit. Okay, so let's drag over the OpenAI chat GPT action and plop it right there. Now, we have a couple fields we have to fill out. The first being the OpenAI API key. So let's go and get that. And I'm gonna go to openai.com. We'll go back to the homepage here so I can show you this from start to finish. I'm gonna click at the top in the menu where it says API, and I'm gonna click login. Now, if you don't have an account already, you have the ability to sign up. I'm not gonna show you that process because it's really simple, like just fill out your name and your email address and some basic details. Uh, I've already done that, so I'm just gonna click this continue with Google so we can really get into this. But uh, if you don't have an account yet, I would encourage you to go sign up. I think you get a couple, like so many free uh, requests on their API. Um, so you'll be able to try try this same thing that we're doing. Uh, on the top right corner, I'm gonna click on personal and I'm gonna click view API keys. Okay, and this is where I can see any API keys I've already generated. Uh, because we're doing this all together, I'm gonna click create new secret key and I'm gonna copy that to my clipboard. Okay, I'm gonna come back over to my automation and I'm gonna to go to insecure string here, and I'm just gonna paste that in. Now, if I was doing this for real, for real, right? Like on a, on a real automation build, I'd probably wanna put this into a credential and then reference that credential. You can do that over here by going to manage and then packages, or I'm sorry, manage and then credentials. And uh, you'll be able to create a locker. A locker has one or more credentials. A credential has one or more attributes. And uh, I, would, I would enter a specific attribute that would have this as my API key. Now, the next thing that we need to fill out is the model. So let's go back here to the documentation. And down at the bottom here in the API reference, we can see models. And this enables us to see all the different models that uh, are available as a part of this uh, API endpoint. There's a bunch of them here. They don't have great descriptions right here. So what I would suggest doing is right clicking right here on Playground. I'm gonna open that in a new tab. And Playground is where I really have the ability to try this out. So um, write a tagline for a company selling hand sanitizer. Clean hands, healthy life, keep germs away with our hand sanitizer, right? All right, so I was able to just to test out this uh, GPT-3 endpoint. 
I'm testing it right now with a specific model of DaVinci 003. If I click this dropdown, I can see all of the different compatible models and I can see a description of each. And notice that each of them has kind of like a different specialty or a different strength. So if I look at text DaVinci 003, it says that it's got, uh, its strengths are complex intent, cause and effect, creative generation, search, summarization for audience. So if I'm doing text-based work, text DaVinci 003 sounds like a good option. If I scroll down here and look at the code DaVinci 002, this one's more for understanding and generating and translating code. So if I was using this to generate code, maybe I wanna have um, a JavaScript uh, execute that, or I'm sorry, JavaScript generated so that I can make a, a call to the control room API, I would make that request to code DaVinci 002. Because we're just gonna do something really simple with our demo, I'm just gonna use this text DaVinci 003. So I'm gonna go back to the open API um, documentation. I'm just gonna copy this name of the model right here so I don't have any spelling errors or anything like that. We're gonna use text DaVinci 003. If you wanna change that to a different one and you wanna try your sample on a code one, you could do that. Um, there's code DaVinci 002, but I'm doing mine on the text DaVinci 003, okay? The next field here is where I give a prompt, and the prompt is really what I'm asking for from GPT-3 and specifically the text DaVinci 003 model. So what I'm gonna put here in the prompt uh, will just be something goofy. Uh, create a catchphrase for a super handsome creative developer evangelist who creates videos about automation anywhere. I'm asking for a friend. So we'll get the response to that one. You can put whatever you want there though, just as a prompt. Um, my max response length is basically how much I want the model to return back to me as far as text. I can set a limit for that. Um, this is specifically helpful when I'm concerned with like how many hits to the API or how many tokens am I using. You can look at the pricing for their API. It's actually very, very inexpensive, but um, you know, you, you wanna set a cap here because you don't want to necessarily write an entire book. Um, this is actually the number of tokens that will be represented in the response. And one token is roughly four English text characters. So you can play around with that a bit. If you wanna see more about the max response length, they have a reference to that in the documentation as well. Secondly is temperature. Temperature is basically uh, how risky I want the model to be. And uh, if I put this closer to a one, it's going to have more creative responses for me and it's gonna be more diverse when it responds back to me. Closer to zero is going to be an, a strict refined answer. So you might wanna play around with the temperature. Again, there are references to this in the documentation so you can see how that works. You can also play around with both of these fields in the um, playground. So if I wanna bump up the max response length or play with the temperature some, I can do that. All right, the last thing is we do wanna get a response from this. So we're gonna map that to our sample string. I'm gonna hit save. And we want to display the results of how the model is coming back to us. So I'm gonna have a message box here. I'm just gonna press F2 and we will uh, display sample string. So just to be clear, sample string is going to hold the response from the API request to the GPT-3 endpoint and sample string is going to display that for us. So let's go ahead and test this and let's figure out what my new catchphrase is gonna be. Looks like my mug just disappeared when I uh, took a drink. Automation everywhere with the super handsome creative dev evangelist, unleash your automation potential. Probably not gonna use that one, but it did a great job of getting that back to me. Um, there are tons of opportunities to implement this within your automations, to clean up data, to format data, uh, to summarize responses, to generate responses. So. Super excited to see where our developer community is able to take this. I'm super excited to see some of the creativity that you guys are able to post on LinkedIn. 
So be sure to check out this package. Again, it's available at botstore.automationanywhere.com. You can download it, you can install it, you can use it if you're on Community Edition or if you're on Enterprise, either one. Post your videos. I wanna see some creative responses though.